Second World War, that was uh, disbanded. Who knows, one work one day, they may bring it back. Well, we're about to get this Tri-Nations underway here in the UK. Brent Webb gets us in motion, deep kick-off. And here come the Aussies in the shape of Shane Webke. And exactly as they started in the match at North Harbour Stadium in Auckland last weekend, a very, very physical battle is opening up in front of our eyes. These Kiwi forwards piling in on the tackle. And it was Logan Swan leading the way then. If you want to see a battle, then keep your eyes on the two number eights. Shane Webke, Jason Kalis. They really will start getting into each other. There is no love lost between the two. Baduras was the dummy half, and he gets the ball away to Fitzgibbon, who has been brought back into the side. And look at the push there from the New Zealand forwards. They're not out of their own half yet, the Australians. This is the last tackle signals Russell Smith. Gray Gow with the kick. And it bounces and skips its way into the arms of Leslie Vinicolo, who flicks the ball inside then to Webb, and a flying tackle coming in. Doesn't, su tackle from doesn't surprise me, Eddie. Obviously, Wayne Bennett's taking the leaf out of uh, Tony Smith's book. So, in the grand final last week, that they gave a lot of work to Leslie Vinacolo, who was running out of petrol late in that match. And it looks like the Australians are going to do exactly the same thing. Little half break from Sonny Boy Williamson. Keep your eye on this fellow, number 13 in the black jersey for the Kiwis. Terrific player. That's a drive forward by Vinnie Anderson. And here now comes Ruben Wickey, the New Zealand captain. That's the last tackle for New Zealand. They're midway inside the Aussies' half. And the high kick from Luluai. And it's spiralling about upstairs. It's hacked forward and hacked forward again, but gobbled up in the end by the, New the Australian defence. Well Unusual. played by Darren Lockyer, the captain there. Unusual to see that, Eddie. Not one Australian attempted to go for that football. They were quite happy to let it bounce. It was on the last. Here's Shane Webke. Oh. Big hit. Terrific drive by the hooker, Louis Anderson, and also Ruben Wickey. Badiris, the dummy half, ball being driven forward again, and once more, Carl Grace, deal there by the Kiwis. Ruben Wickey has it for New Zealand, and here they come now in the shape of Kalis. This is Nathan Kalis. Tried to slip the pass. Well, that was suicidal, wasn't it? They put themselves under a lot of pressure. What a, what a pass that was! should have done that the skipper wicked did exceptionally well but a quick play the ball they went through on the blind side and they took full advantage watch this and watch the two passes the final ones unbelievable pass there Vangana and as all fullbacks should do you support on the inside that was a classic try and the Australians have paid the price of trying to keep the ball alive deep but in their own quarter suicidal what a fantastic drive from Brent Webb and what a wonderful pass from Sonny Bill Williams but Webb is the man who got over the whitewash the New Zealand warrior and Webb is the man who's going to try and convert his try he's 23 years of age this fellow born in Cairns in Queensland Queensland he qualifies for New Zealand though under the three-year residential rule and Brent Webb to try and give the Kiwis an absolutely dream start of 6-0 just as they had in Auckland seven days ago oh he's hit the post they lead though New Zealand by four points to nil Super stuff here, Vanganar, offload, look at the fullback screaming for it. They got caught cold there in Australia. They were still worrying about the fact that they'd offloaded. But what a miss that could be. Yes, important miss that maybe. Lockyer's kick off. Oh. 
Well, how on earth did he manage to take that? Slipped as he received the ball, the prop forward, Jason Kalis, but still managed to hang on. And here come New Zealand now, and Australia piling in with the tackles. Well, the one thing that Australians normally do, their discipline is good when they've got the football in their hands. And that was not on show then. And Wiki was waiting for the pass that never came. Louis Anderson plays the ball to the captain. And the big kick downfield, but straight into the arms of Minicello. Here come Australia. Good chase, though, from the kick by the New Zealanders. And it was led by the uh, loose forward, Sonny Bill Williamson. 19 years of age, this fellow, and what a talent. Sonny Bill Williams. On halfway, it's Gower. Gower then to Tony Carroll. Good run from Carroll. Interesting to see how Wayne Bennett is using the big fella, the loose forward, Carroll. He's running, he's running outside wide of the centres. Danny Badiris waits the dummy half for Australia. Darren Lockyer. Then Craig Gower. Back on the inside to Hindmarsh, but the New Zealanders waiting for him. Oh, he manages to get the ball away, though. Badiris went on to Lockyer. Brilliant hands, Berrigan. Wide he comes here to the winger. Matt Singh. And Singh cutting in field, and somehow New Zealand managed to bring him down. I'm not so sure of that silly play there by the skipper, Ruben Wiki. He was all over it dragged the foot across but I'm not so sure that Matt Singh shouldn't have gone for the corner great opportunity there on the right hand side okay the cover defense was coming quickly but he's got plenty of speed as Matt Singh well they're not interested in the two they're looking for four Australia and here they are with Jason Riles about eight meters away from the line Webb Key to Gower to Lockyer good hands great hands chance on the inside Luke Rooney, who got two tries on his debut against New Zealand last week, and he now has three tries against New Zealand. Luke Rooney, but that was scintillating skill from Australia as they ran the ball from right to left. And every pass stuck, and in the end, Rooney was on the end of the final one. Well, there we see Matt Singh not going for the corner, not electing for it. That was a silly penalty. They denied the chance of the two points. They knew that they needed the pressure. They knew that they were behind in the goal. Beautiful play there. Look how they utilize the second road as the dummy runner. That was wonderful running by Craig Fitzgibbon off the ball. Watch him create this opening. There's the man running through. Bang. He just pulled the sender towards him. Back on the inside from Willie Tonga. And the guy that knows all about going over for the four-pointer, Luke Rooney. And Craig Fitzgibbon restored to the side because he's a master goal kicker and proving why. And the Australians have the lead here. It's six points to four after they trail 4-0 early. That's why Fitzgibbon has been brought back into this Australian green and gold side. Well, Dean Bell is watching alongside us, of course. The Kiwis off to a flying start, Dean, but there are problems there for them. Every time Australia get the ball wide, that pass stuck. It was terrific play. Yeah, especially on the Kiwis' right-hand side defence. There was a problem last week with that, and it continues to be. So they've got to work on that. They've really got to hold off. Let the Australians play, make their plays, hold off, and then Don't try and slide out. Dream Don't start for them, though. Oh, Absolutely yes, a dream. Sonny Bill Williams, what can you say about him? I mean, first set of six, made a break, 30-yard break. Second set, the yeah, time he had the ball in his hands, great offload. And Nigel Vagana, what power to offload that ball in the tackle. Great start to the match. It's early, of course, but Australia leading by six points to four. Deep kickoff. Lockyer underneath it. Tips it inside to Webke. Oh, great run from Webke. Oh, three times they bounced off him. And in the end... Vanganar moved in and caught him high. Did he ever? And you can see Webke's head go back here. Poof! <laughs> Maybe only a centre, but he's, uh, he packs powerful punch. A little wry right grin on the face of Shane Webke. He's, uh, he's taken a few of those throughout his career. Penalty to Australia then. They restart and they get to the halfway line, courtesy of uh, Jason Riles. Well, he could have got him again there. 
Wangana went very, very high yet again. He wants to get the message. Daniel Anderson, the coach, say, come on, calm it down a little bit. The last thing that the Kiwis want is to give Australia good position with a penalty. Or oh, nearly a break there from Gower. An important tackle low down there by the second row, Ruben Wicky. And here is Lockyer. And he gets the ball away to Minicello, who tries to beat the tackle. And all around him there was uh, Fatuira. Badiris, the dummy half for Australia. Here is Lockyer. Attacking the line. Great ball. Berrigan always oh, stripped the net again. Flicks it back to Badiris. And Badiris actually was almost grounded by Luluai. He was getting up from the previous tackle. Lockyer. Gower. Movement from Australia all over the, pl the place. But that kick far too deep. Well, a poor finish to a wonderful build up by the Australians. And you've got to admire the way that this fella, Craig Gower, is combining with Darren Lockyer. You know, they're swinging the ball out wide on two occasions. Then they'll straighten it up. And then straight away, they'll bring someone back on the angle, confusing the Kiwi defence at the moment. New Zealand were last here in 2002. They shared the series with Great Britain. They made the World Cup final, of course, in 2000. And in 1998, they were unbeaten in a three-match hit-and-run tour against Great Britain. And here they are trailing just by two points, ten and three-quarter minutes gone. And the hooker, Louis Anderson, with a little run, ten metres inside the Australian half of the field. Oh, and that was a mess. And it came off, they're trying to claim it came off the foot of Fitzgibbon. Well, it just lost control, and there was a knock-on there as well. Would well, he be happy with Daniel Anderson with the opening start? It was classic play by this loose forward, this youngster, Sonny Bill Williams. Boy, what a talent. Gower feeds the scrum for Australia. The winger, Rooney, has drifted in field, but uh, there's the welcoming committee for him. Big hit there by Vanganar, and also quickly in the tackle, Vinny Anderson. And uh, Maxine swinging out. Uh, really felt that. Another big hit on the driving run from Jason Ryle. There may be big hits, but look how it's attracting the Kiwi defence. Quick play of the ball, they're in a lot of trouble. Good job that Louis Anderson just held him down. This is Gower again. Tries to cut inside Ruben Wickey, who did well. And another penalty against New Zealand. Maybe they'll take the two here. Well, he's on fire, this fellow, Nigel Vangana. And there's little doubt that uh, it Wiki, was Ruben Wiki, Wiki that went for it. Go, yeah. But he's going very high, is this fella. Not surprisingly, Russell Smith has had a little word on the run. Formerly with Warrington, of course. Uh, Nigel Vangana earning his call these days at the Cronulla Sharks in the NRL. 17 tries for Warrington in 1997, you might remember. He's one tough hombre, this fellow, I'll tell you. Well, Fitzgibbon can kick them from all over the place, so it's uh, hardly surprising that Aaron Lockyer and Wayne Bennett have maybe sent the message to him and said, listen, we'll have the two on offer here. This for an 8-4 lead then. And 8-4 it is to Australia. Two successful kicks from Craig Fitzgibbon. And the try from Luke Rooney. And there is Wayne Bennett, the coach of the Australian national side. In a Brisbane since 1988, 17 seasons, over 400 games, five premierships, World Club Challenge in 1992, the World Club Championship in 1997, 22 Origin games as Queensland coach, he's won five series. It's not a bad CV, steve -O. Oh, he's a great coach, no doubt about that, and uh, he's one heck of a nice fella, too. Deep kickoff from the Kiwis, and underneath it was Lockyer, and here is Webke again. It didn't surprise me, any that they went for the two points on offer. It's just a little bit of a comfort blanket that they were looking for. Oh. Kalis, that was Jason Kalis, in very strongly, the third man in, as uh, Riles drove that forward. This is Tony Carroll for the Australians. The one thing that worries me at the moment, the Kiwis spending a lot of energy. They're having to, having to get through a lot of tackles. And the, the Australians, the way they're running with the football, 
They're attracting not just one would-be tackler, but sometimes three and often four. Great kick from Darren Lockyer. And that will have to be run back by Francis Melly. And a great chase from Australia as well. Penned inside his own 10-metre zone. Well, they are certainly at the pace of the match now, Australia, after maybe taking an early sucker punch, but here they've conceded the penalty. It's a little bit too much there from the front forward, Shane Wecky and Danny Badiris. Just laying all over him. Made it quite clear, though, as Russell Smith. They want uh, a clean play of the ball, and rightly so. I mean, the talent that's out there, Eddie, we are in for one heck of a game. Well, it's going to be a magnificent series, this. And when Great Britain enter the fray next week, who knows what might happen. Wiki, the Kiwis captain, almost to the halfway line. And Luluai gets the ball wide, and he finds Sonny Bill Williams, who finds Melly over on that far side. Melly keeps oh, the ball wide brilliantly. Van Gennar into Brent Webb. Forward a mile. Just overrun it there, did uh, Jason Kalis, but they've got away with it. Here's Luluai again. Good ball, was it? Well, it was turned into a decent ball by Bay Nicolo. He knew where Logan Swan was going to pop that, possibly, being a Bradford teammate. There is Logan Swan, and he now is Luluai. And Luluai then to Webb, and Webb dancing in front of the defenders, but uh, eventually being dropped to the ground by Sean Timmins on as a substitute. Anderson. Luluai stabbed to kick in behind the defence. Minicello is there to tidy up for Australia. Great position. Nice little option, though, by the New Zealanders. Just dink the ball into that corner, but he does read it so well, does Anthony Minicello. Good work from the first... Good work from to go. Yeah, but good work from the first and second marker. It's uh, That's where you really put the pressure on. Tony Carroll... He will play the ball, and Berrigan will run it from dummy half. Good defence from New Zealand there. 17 metres gained by the Kangaroos, that's all. And here is Gower. Good deep kick from Gower. This could be a 40-20 if it skips. But it doesn't. It's picked up by Brent Webb. Let's go to the sideline injury news. Chris Warren. Not good news for uh, the Kangaroos. Craig Fitzgibbon, you saw him come off there holding his shoulder. It's the same shoulder, I understand, as last week. It's an AC joint. Uh, it ruled him out of the, the first Tri-Nations match. They said he may be back. Well, let's get straight back down to the sideline because Ian Millwood is watching down there. Ian, your impressions of the opening 17 minutes? Well, the first thing you do, Eddie, when it's a wet, windy night is think of your kicking game. And if you look at the composure and the sort of more pressure in the kicking game from Gower and Lockyer, there's a lot more than the experience uh, Lula Lai. He uh, only knew the NRL and definitely knew to, to test rugby league. The other thing, too, as you've noticed, well, Eddie, is the experienced positions when it's wet. The hooker, the halfback, and the 5'8". Australia got a bunch of NRL rings, state of origin and premierships there, and Australian caps. It's New Zealand, very inexperienced. And this has been why they've been dominant early Australia in those two key areas. There might be experience, inexperience in the New Zealand ranks, but uh, we just saw another little flash from Sonny Boy Williams, and what a talent this 19-year-old is. Driving the ball forward, Australia. In the shape of Berrigan. That's one Lockyer, thing. Lockyer, here's Webke. One thing that uh, Wayne Bennett he opted to play in the centre, Sean Berrigan, mainly because of his toughness. And boy, you've got to have that when you take on the Kiwis. Gower. Oh, he went inside them. And he nearly there left Jason Kalis for dead. Well, he rolled off the tackle. The crowd don't like it. The Aussie fans, they're booing the referee, but he's got it absolutely spot on. Gower bounced away, the tackle was not complete, and that is the first poor kick we've seen from Australia. Here's Van oh, Well, he enters hospital for an operation. The Bradford Bulls say that he needs during the winter to be absolutely right for the start of Super League next year. Well, I'll tell you what, the way that Tony Carroll went in with a big hit, he nearly was off for an early operation. Boy. Anderson again, and here is Wiki on his inside. Hands up four. Good play as well by the Kiwis. They realised that uh, they were put on the rack for a little bit of time for the last ten minutes. What a pass. Another great oh, ball. Just went to ground in the end. Sadly. Sonny Bill Williams. 
This guy's sensational. Oh, you'd think he'd been playing international rugby league football for about 10 years. Chance here for the winger. Matt Singh but came in field, cut down by three. And there is an Australian out in back play. This is Minicello, meanwhile. He's one of the big men as well for Australia, by the way. He's down. He's receiving treatment. I think and it might be Badiris. Jason. Is it Badiris or...? No, this is Badiris, and this now is Carroll. It it's might Heinmarsh. be Heinmarsh, yeah, you're right. Badiris waits at dummy half again. It's Lockyer. Lockyer to Minicello. Minicello just pops the ball up. Great movement once again from Australia. This is Sean Timmins. Badiris. He pushes Berrigan out of the way. Gower. Gower to Lockyer. Lockyer flicks the pass brilliantly. Minicello. Minicello still waiting for the support. It arrives in the shape of Riles. Kiwis are going, Kiwis going far too high, they've got to get the legs. Lockyer slides the kick across the field of play and out. And New Zealand will breathe a little sigh of relief about that. Wayne Bennett won't. Looks pretty calm though, doesn't it? Lockyer realised that there was a golden opportunity. You could see that Leslie Vinicolo had come from the whitewash on the wing. There was a huge gap there. And if Matt Singh had have stood out in his proper position, that would have been a gift of a try. Wait again, wait, wait. Dean Bell, 8 for Australia. Uh, New Zealand muscling up well. Yeah, well, New Zealand are just hanging in there. I think, you know, I'm fearing the worst here. Australia putting so much pressure on. Kicking game is outstanding. As Ian Millwood says, the uh, New Zealand been down the 30 metre zone three times so far for two poor kicks. Yes, they've scored a try, but they need to be better in their kicking game. Great support for the Kiwis inside the stadium, as you can hear. All that ball comes free. That'll be a knock-on play-on. We play the first knock-on, no advantage, and I think the first knock-on came from the Australian. It should be head and feet to the Kiwis. That went backwards, so that's all right. And there you can see Hindmarsh, who recovered from that knock. And he's got it right as the official Russell Smith. He's having a fine game. Willie Mason preparing to come on for Australia. Well, test match rugby at the end of our domestic season here in the UK. Isn't it amazing that the Australians can afford to start a game without Willie Mason in the lineup? He's on the bench. I mean, man of the match in the grand final this year down under. David Kidwell now for the Kiwis. Plays the ball to Anderson, looking for the runners. It has arrived in the shape of Asatazi. Good play as well, but on that occasion, Australia just a little bit slow. See the first and second marker, a little Zula. bit slow to go to it. Nice tackle from Einmarge. Oh, and a right schmuzzle. He took his eyes off it. Not a happy the coach, Mr. Anderson. Well, it was nearly there for Kidwell. Just took his eyes off it for a second. Good work from the halfback, Lula White. Anguish for Daniel Anderson. Of course, Lula White. The Kiwi legend, of course, is his father, James, James Lulawai. In the 80s with Hull, Wakefield and Lee. So the name will need no introduction to the people up there in Hull, certainly. Well, the real disappointment to the coach, and it is mainly due to the fact that, you know, very rare have they got into the Australian defensive quarter and applied the pressure. And there again, they've come up with an error. And there's an error, though, from the Australian. And Sonny Bill, I think, dropped on it. Gratefully, yes, it was. And here's Kidwell again. Can they turn this possession into something? Big hit there on Asatazi. Great. And Louis Anderson, the dummy half. He finds that man, Lulawai. Here is Brent Webb. Short pass. And Vinnie Anderson has to take the tackle. But the Louis at dummy half. Webb again. Good ball now. This is Fatuira. Logan Swan, infield to Luluai, Kidwell hangs on, oh and it's opened up for Kidwell, and here's the support, Sonny Bill, halted 10 metres short of the line on the last tackle, Williams will get to his feet and play this to Webb. We've got to try to get a repeat six, got to be a good kick. Kick to the end goal from Luluai, looking for Leslie Vinicolo, off the feet of Vinicolo, oh, well he, he surely oh, 
Lockyer anyway. It didn't matter. He's blaming that Lockyer is actually. And now someone said something to the official. Lockyer didn't touch it. And it was being pulled back anyway by Vanicolo. Kiwi fans here, don't they're not too impressed with that. But neither was the official. The one thing you've got to do at any level, and never mind whether it's international or not. Oh, they haven't made it. They haven't made touch. Well, that's an unusual error from Australia. They've made ground, but they don't make the touchline. And here come New Zealand again. Oh, Kidwell felt that. Did he do? And then he gets him a second time. And here's Asotazi now. It's starting to warm up a bit. Is it ever? And what a contact there from the big fellow, Willie Machen, who became famous, of course, Eddie, with this huge mop of hair. And I asked him during this week as to why he had it cut short, and he said it was slowing him down. <laughs> and Kidwell, little half break. Last tackle here for New Zealand. It's with Luluai, and now Webb. And the kick from Webb, but not a good one. Straight into the arms of Anthony Milicello. Ian Millward. Yeah, Eddie, at the moment, it's interesting to see some people need to be replaced because uh, they're coming off a little mini off-season. A couple of players have had a run up Papua New Guinea. A couple of New Zealand's had a run last week and their teams have knocked the other semis early. And Injuries and uh, conditioning are going to play a little bit of a part here. But the New Zealand are hanging in there at the moment. But, gee, it's great to see some of these hits, isn't it? People getting off their line and really putting some shoulder contact. The crowd are loving it. Everyone's loving it here. It's excellent. It is, it is excellent. It's a, a terrific contest. 8-4 so far. Australia just with their noses in front. Gower to Lockyer. Lockyer looks for the runners. It's Minicello. Great ball back from the inside to Berrigan. He's clawed down by Logan Swan. Last tackle here for Australia. Minicello. Lockyer. Sivanasiva. Gower. A fumble. He tried to offload. He tried to offload because the pressure was being applied. Good work by New Zealand. The first reason why they had to keep the ball alive was the fact they just hunted down Darren Lockyer, who's normally the kicker on the Australian side. Well, they're not out of this, the Kiwis. They haven't had many opportunities down the Australian end. No, they've only had really one clear-cut opportunity, and they took that. This is Logan Swan. And a couple of half chances, a couple of kicks, but nothing coming of it. This is Fatuira. And uh, absolutely dead level, possession inside each other's half. Luluai hands the ball on to Kidwell, that was a short ball and a risky pass and the Australians were waiting. There was nowhere there for Asatazi to go and the kick down the line will find touch. Well, a better serve by doing that, instead of putting it straight down the throat of uh, Anthony Minicello, you may as well force him back. Slippy conditions out there, anything can happen. And if it's given waiting to come back on the field. But uh, there's the fellow who's taken the eye, Sonny Bill Williams. He's all talent. And Robbie Paul is on for the Kiwis now. What a good mood by Daniel Anderson as well, because he knows the experience of Robbie Paul, certainly help influence the younger players on the Kiwi outfit. And he's good enough for Bradford Bulls, but when he gets this black and white jersey on for the Kiwi, Steve-O, he, he grows, his chest puffs out. They're all the same, Eddie. You could put a three-year-old kid out there with a New Zealand jumper, and any international jumper, Australian, Great Britain, you name it. They will fight, and so they should. Seven receiver for Australia. Bobby Paul with the tackle. And you can see the way that... Uh, since 1908, the matches between these two, the Australians have got uh, such advantage. But uh, this is 2004, and Tony Carroll has put the ball down. The play the scrum, no advantage. Well, that's the way to do it. Make sure that you got the impact underneath the rib cage. Quite often, the shoulder can go right underneath the ball carrying arm, and that's exactly what happened on that occasion. That's a mistake that they've been hunting early in the tackle count as well. Must have so I've been impressed with the way that Australia have run the angles though. But to be fair, the Kiwis defense at times struggling, but they do get back in numbers. Sonny Bill once again, and the Australians know the danger of this teenager. That's a penalty, penalty. Yeah. it is. 
How's that for experience? Well, he doesn't have much, but he knew exactly that he had numbers underneath him. So as soon as he knew that he tried to get up and play the ball, the official would give it. Look at this. Gower couldn't move. He looks at the referee. Thank you very much. So New Zealand will come again. They've uh, just received their second penalty. They're 20 metres away. Robbie Paul, nice little thing to come inside. Went outside and found Francis Melly. Scoots in then at dummy half. Ball comes in field. Here's Azotazi again for New Zealand. And uh, Willie Mason was the man who was first to him. Robbie Paul again. Comes then to Luluai. Here is Webb. Webb then looking for a bit of width. And he finds Tony Carroll, it had the ball knocked and then they swung it out wide. Oh, absolutely sensational. They used a the dummy runner, caught them tight. Watch how they've come off. Berrigan just hesitated and you could see there that Matt Singh, he was left in no man's land. That's how he celebrates and boy, he's done that a lot this season. What a player. He was out on his feet last week in the grand final. I don't think I've ever seen any player in a grand final bring the ball back as many times. He is all class. Well, sadly, he needs an operation, as I say, that means he will miss the rest of this tournament after today. He asked the Bradford Bulls if he could play this one match, and they agreed. And uh, the New Zealanders will miss him. No doubt about that for the remainder of this uh, Tri-Nations. Bearing in mind that he's taking the place of Matt Utai. And it's uh, Henry Farfili of the Warrington Wolves who is coming into the squad to replace Leslie Vinacolo. It is quite an act to follow. Well, a slight hold-up in proceedings because the New Zealanders apparently had lost their kicking tee. They've found it now and Brent Webb will therefore line up this conversion attempt by the way as well as this tri-nations uh, series that is up and running now there is underneath this the european championships and the england boys are playing uh, in moscow against russia tomorrow we wish them all the very best for that and the final of the european nations cup will be staged at the warrington's halliwell jones stadium a week on sunday and you'll be able to see that match with us live on Sky Sports as well as this Tri-Nations tournament. The rain continuing to fall here in London. In fact, it gets even heavier at Loftus Road as uh, Brent Webb lines up this conversion attempt. Slippy conditions, it's very difficult for the kickers. But this would give the New Zealanders the lead again if it sails over. Eight all at the moment. Shocking conditions for kickers. Brent Webb misses, but Vinicolo's tries tied the scores up. It's eight apiece. And what a try that was. Oh, sensational. The mistake came. You can see, look how two have gone in for the same man. And there is Matt Singh. He's all on his own. The space is created. And we know what the big guy can do. Well, it was 16 all last Saturday morning. In Auckland, it's eight all here at Loftus Road in London. What a closely fought contest this Tri Nations is going to be, with Great Britain entering the fray next week to take on the green and gold of Australia. Just shows you the importance of keeping possession. Tony Carroll got it dislodged, locked it down, scrum was put down, and for one of the very few occasions, the Kiwis in the Australian quarter, and the, oh, that's a mistake. They've got away with it. That'll be a knock on to Australia. Surely it's got to be seen by the official, and it has. No, it's a penalty here. 
It's a penalty to Australia. Rahihi is judged to have stolen the ball. Well, he tried to offload it. And I thought before that, I think Heinmarsh got a hand to it, but well, you're right there. He ripped it in the end. But I think the build-up to that. There it is. Struggling for the ball. And there is uh, young Thomas Luluai, another 19-year-old. It augurs well for the future of uh, New Zealand uh, Rugby League. And, of course, uh, when we mention the name of Luluai, Dean Bell, who is up here with us, you know all about his dad. You partnered him many, many times in the centres for New Zealand. Yeah, one of the greatest centres that the game's ever seen. Um, just looking at Tom Suluai, uh, the Australians are targeting him in attack. And that's when Tony Carroll uh, ran into him. But he's got a good defensive game, so he popped that, that shoulder and then the ball came out. But the Australians just lost their way midway through that uh, first half and just guilty of some turnovers. Well, this is respect from Australia because uh, it's given. We'll try and kick this goal and you would put your house on him kicking it. But not on a night like this. Well, you can see that the rain is pouring down. A little bit of pressure appearing on the face of Wayne Bennett. Steve-O, should we get the, uh, the prayer mat out and get the rain dancers ready for next week at the City of Manchester Stadium? To be fair, Eddie, I think that uh, the Great Britain boys, they don't want it wet. They've got the quality. And they want to be able to get some open rugby league football out there. The one thing that will be a great advantage, I feel, is that this game is drawn. Australia will come forward again with Fitzgibbon, who's just missed that uh, penalty. Just eight metres inside their own half of the field, Australia, which with Gower, who finds Heinmarsh. And Heinmarsh steps out of one challenge, steps out, oh, loses the ball. It was one-on-one, -on -one. good referee by Russell Smith. And so Asatazi has it for New Zealand, but he now, no, he hasn't lost it, it's a penalty here. It was one-on-one -on -one given there, and I think the official got it right. And then you heard the shrill blow of uh, Mr. Smith's whistle again, and he's given a penalty to New Zealand on halfway. <laughs> yep, one and one. I want to join the fray. It's an important passage of play now for New Zealand. They've got to just keep their control, not try to offload, maybe just force another set of six. They have the ability, as we saw last week, of scoring short range tries. Look, two of the tries came from dummy half, very low. Picked up on the half volley by Luluai, and he finds Trent Webb, who finds Anderson. It's Vinnie Anderson. This is an important uh, phase of the match here for these two sides. Can New Zealand get over for another try? It bounced off Sonny Bill Williams and found its way eventually into the arms of Kidwell. Robbie Paul directing the traffic at dummy half, and this now is the runner, Rahihi. That's good defence. Managed to stay in the field of play and somehow release the ball anyway. Since Robbie Paul has come into the fray, he's improved the attacking force of the, the Kiwis. He's utilising that blind side. A couple of occasions he's done that. Oh, and here's a chance for Logan Swan. He's got a man on the inside there. Score with Anderson. Vinnie Anderson for the New Zealanders. They took the risk on the last tackle. They elected to run it. took full advantage beautiful stuff there what a pass on the inside and the man who scored it Vinnie Anderson he was utilized as the dummy runner to start with and that's the reason why they caught him out that's why he put himself into a good position a lot of dummy runners and this is what it meant to the coach he looks happy and he has every right to be that way the Kiwi fans they're ecstatic but just getting to that point, Eddie, you know, when a dummy runner comes through, quite often they think their job has been done and they stop. Not on that occasion. Vinny Anderson kept motoring down the middle, and when the inside pass came, scooted over for a very, very good T.R.Y. Try on the power play then on the last tackle, and Webb has missed another kick. That's naught from three from Brent Webb. 
but New Zealand have the lead 12 points to 8 and Ian Millwood is this going to be a turn up for the books well weather conditions like this it's going to influence the game and uh, oh for dry weather and better conditions because when both teams have moved it they've looked very very good interesting it's the right hand side of Australia which have conceded two tries last week it was the New Zealand right hand side even though they've already conceded one look there's a long way to go on this uh, both teams have got so much skill and there's a drop ball Stray get a pressure before half time maybe a try Francis Melli with the blunder got it all wrong well it's very difficult the floodlights here Loftus Road are very very high and I think he had a lot of problems it was a high take he'd be looking right into those floodlights well this is a glorious opportunity for Australia but Craig Gower just losing his footing at the wrong moment and Kidwell completing the tackle Budiris and he finds Tony Carroll will drive it in again will Carroll and the New Zealanders muscling up in defence and bringing the man who once had the black and white of New Zealand on his back to ground didn't like it Tony Carroll Badiris to Gower to Lockyer and Lockyer with the pass to Minicello great sliding defence there working as a good unit now the Kiwis here's Lockyer this is the engineer in chief good ball to Cinema Siva Five metres away from the line, four tackles gone, can New Zealand survive this pressure? It comes back to Lockyer again, here is Tony Carroll, tries to pop the ball back and he does. And a great tackle from Vinacolo on Hindmarsh, this is the last one. The dearest Lockyer's been involved in every tackle in this set of six. It's with Minicello, Minicello then, wide it goes to Tonga, Tonga pops the ball back, Minicello is ground into the turf. That'll be the and turnover. New Zealand what a tackle by Leslie Vinacolo. The Australians look for all the world they were going to get there in the corner on the right-hand side. And as I mentioned, the sliding defence on two occasions. Just mop up behind. There's the big fella. Well, can New Zealand survive this 30 seconds and take this four-point lead with them into the dressing rooms at half-time? What a bonus that would be for them. Well, they'll be quite happy to just run from dummy half. No point in taking the risk of offloading so close remember we've already seen one mistake they've got the tactics right and they'll need another one and that will do it oh and it's a charge down Lulawai was under pressure the ball hits the post oh. and in the end Anderson the try saver he was the try scorer a few moments ago the half time siren sounds and Danny Anderson makes his way to the dressing room and Loftus Road rises to the Kiwis they have matched the Aussies all the way New Zealand has started the scoring in this test match and they finished at three tries to one unfortunately no kicks successful for Brent Webb but they still lead this game at the break 12 points to eight I'll be back with Matthew Johns in just a moment to have a look at all the first half action Weekend 16 all between Australia and New Zealand. For the second week in a row, the New Zealanders really putting it to the more favoured Australian teams. The Kiwis coming into this game again underdogs, but after 40 minutes they lead 12 points to eight and most importantly have scored three tries to one. Statistically, they've been quite good. Kicking game being a little bit down for the, the New Zealanders. I think Daniel Anderson will be disappointed with that part of their game. And there you can see. Well, the line breaks favouring New Zealand 3-1. to one. The errors, well, 9 against 4. That would be a concern for Wayne Bennett. He'd also be hoping for uh, time in possession to turn around in that second 40 minutes. 52% up against 48. Matty Johns, I've got to say that in recent times, you can almost write the script for these kind of games. New Zealand score the first try, Australia storm back, and then the Kiwis find something and come back as well. That's the way that the last three or four test matches have gone. Yeah, it has a little bit. I think with Australia, when I watch the play, look at the errors. Everybody's trying to do a little bit of something for Australia. The front rowers are trying to offload, the back rowers are trying to pass. They've got to get back to just going forward, playing the ball quick, 
creating space for Lockyer and Gower. They look frustrated. The Kiwis are laying on us a little bit, and they're getting away with it. Good luck to them. And got a good start to this game once again. That is always so important for this Kiwi side. In fact, in the first five minutes, again, Sonny Bill Williams featured very prominently to open up the first try for Brent Webb. Same combination that we almost saw last week score a try. The ball given away there by Jason Riles and Sonny Bill. Last week he'd have put Vanganar in if he'd have been able to control the football. This time Webb was there to score. He's got a great gift, Sonny Bill Williams. He puts the ball under one arm and the defenders think he, they're just gonna, he's just going to take him on. Then at the last second, as they come at him outside in, he, he throws the flick pass. I think it's been a preordained move. I think they, they tried it last week and uh, this week it's paid dividends. A couple of tries last week for Luke Rooney and Daniel Anderson would have stressed to his players the importance of picking the right decoy runner. He'd have been disappointed that Australia opened their scoring and it was Luke Rooney scoring his third try in just his second test match. About eight metres away from the line. Webkey to Gower to Lockyer. Good hands, great hands. Chance on the inside and they're in. And it's Luke Rooney who got two tries on his debut against New Zealand last week. Yeah, Pete, we saw this on a couple of occasions last week and it's worked again this week. You know, when the Aussies settle down, like I said, get forward and put these pre-planned moves on, they look very good. At the moment, too much ad-lib football. Shane Whipke, the first receiver there, a great decoy run by a back rower. As you say, it was a carbon copy of what we saw last week. I love it when an opposition team is able to turn the tables and New Zealand scoring their second try were able to put on a similar move to that again down the left hand side of the field and Leslie Vainicolo coming into this game after being beaten in the Super League final over there for Bradford got this team second and uh, Willie Mason was the man who was first to him Robbie Paul again it comes then to Luluai here is Webb Webb then looking for a bit of width and he finds It's almost like the New Zealand camp watched Australia last week and said, that's not bad, we'll use that. <laughs> yeah, and it was a great pass by Vinnie Anderson. Matt Singh read it well, he saw the second, second man play coming, but he's just a little bit late on the scene. And all of a sudden he just picks, uh, he picks the right pass. He's playing fantastic, Vinnie Anderson. And that made the score eight all, and as I mentioned before the break, they have got a problem in the goal kicking. If it comes down to goal kicking, Australia will win off the boot of Craig Fitzgibbon. But for New Zealand to win this game, they'll need to score tries. They're doing that very nicely. And the final points of this first half came from Vinnie Anderson. He's improved the attacking force of the, the Kiwis. He's utilising that blind side. A couple of occasions he's done that. Oh, and here's a chance for Logan Swan. He's got a man on the inside there. Score with Anderson. Vinnie Anderson for the New Zealanders. Nice break here from Logan Swan. But good lead-up work on the inside. And a good option, Matty, running the ball on the last tackle. That's something of a shock tactic. Yeah, that, that's a nice tactic. I mean, look, the New Zealanders, they're having problems with their defence on the right-hand side. But in the back half of that first half, Pete, so are we. The combinations, it's a little sticky at the moment. We're not getting it right. Just quickly, what will Wayne Bennett be saying to his side four points down? Look, I, th I think he'll be stressing the importance of not panicking. And, and you don't want to chase points. A big factor is the rain at the moment. You know, it's pouring, it's slippery, can, tri tricky conditions. He's just got to settle down. They've got to play field position. Uh, put a lot of emphasis on defence. Yeah, some work to be done. Great 40 minutes coming up at the moment. Four-point lead to New Zealanders going into that second 40 minutes. 12-8 at the break. They've scored three tries to one. We'll be back in a moment with all the second half action. Australia have lost just two of their last 12 test matches against New Zealand. That is in danger of becoming three. They trail the Kiwis 12-8 at the break. Back to London now with Eddie Hemmings and Mike Stevenson. ground rose to greet them after that fantastic first half. It's Australia, though, who get us underway with Lockyer with the deep kickoff underneath the New Zealanders' posts. And it's quite apt, really, that we're here at... Uh, the home of Queen's Park Rangers because way, way back in 1908, Queen's Park Rangers hosted the very first Anglo-Australian Test match, but it was at Park Royal in Wilsdon at the time, and it was Great Britain 22, Australia 22. Well, I wonder whether we will have a repeat in terms of the result here between Australia and New Zealand as we play this second half at the Queen's Park Rangers modern ground at Loftus Road. The Kiwis are in possession. And they want a good start in this second half. And Sonny Bill Williams might 
Well, he might get French red cards. He couldn't hang on to the football after the pass, and Australia have the ball back. Well, that really was a shame because we saw two beautiful offloads by the Kiwis. Amazing in this sort of weather in the first half. New Zealand, 13 offloads. Make that 15 now against Australia, 6. They are really bossing things in and around the ruck area. It's just amazing that we're seeing this with all this rain just pelting down. Badiris gets the, the pass away, but good defence again over on that far side from New Zealand. And Craig Gower now for Australia, turns the ball back inside, finds Sivana Siva. I think the Australians really have to step up a gear. We haven't seen much drives forward from their forwards. This is Lockyer, oh, a little drop of the shoulder, great start to the second half. Dallin Lockyer, just what they wanted, the Australians. A little drop of the shoulder, a little thing to go one way. The door opens, and Lockyer, arguably the world's finest player, he has found the key to the Kiwis' door. And he has given Australia a perfect start to the second half. Just what New Zealand didn't want. Well, the point I was making, I was expecting more work from the Australian forwards when you've got quality like this out there. Gower back on the inside. You can see they just hesitated. One Kiwi forward had gone right out to the one section line. And when you come back on the angle like that, you can't afford to do it. And he just made easy meat of it. What a great try. And Fitzgibbon from bang in front doesn't make mistakes from there. And it seems in the twinkling of an eye at the start of this second half, the Australians have turned the deficit into an advantage. They lead 14-12. Well, most of the tries have come from mistakes just like that. And watch the way it comes through. And you can see there, Paul Rahihi went out of the one line he left a huge gap for this fella to come flying through. And that's a problem. And Daniel Anderson will be upset with that, mainly due to the fact that their sliding defence has been so good. They've worked hard in and around the rock area. But on that occasion, they got caught. Dean Bell, that was not in the Kiwi script. No, that's the last thing they needed coming out in the second half. But the, the turnover was just a lack of concentration, really. I mean, the pass was on. They'd offloaded in, in the previous uh, tackle, and things were going well for them. But just lock here, what can you say about him? Uh, any uh, defensive frailties around the ruck here, he'll, he'll expose them. Class act, the best fullback in the world and playing standoff tonight. Well, that's right. Uh, arguably the best standoff in the world as well. <laughs> Number one, without a doubt. Gower with a good kick downfield. It will turn Webb around. But Melly is the man who takes control of the situation for New Zealand. And Simon Seaver and Hindmarsh come flying in. Webb gets the pass away. Vina Colo. That'll have settled the nerves of the Australians who have been a bit uh, edgy in that dressing room at half time. No doubt words of wisdom from Wayne Bennett. He, uh, he's not a man to lose his temper, but I'm sure he would have asked for a little bit more. Well, they got away with that. New Zealand, Asatazi has the possession for them. And here now is Rahihi. He flicks it then on the inside to Kidwell. And away from dummy half goes the standoff that is uh, Vinnie Anderson. It's the last one, though. And Robbie Paul with the kick just drifts it over the top. And that's a poor kick straight into the arms of Luke Rooney. Well, that's a fourth kick throughout this game that... The Kiwis have put it right down the throat of the Australians, and even in these conditions, you know, you may come up with the error. But why don't they do what they did late in that first half, where they kept it on the ground, where it's slippy? Doesn't matter whether they're going to put the uh, the scrum down. At least you put in the scrum down in their defensive quarter. Simmons even plays the ball to Badiris. Here comes Willie Mason. Gets Australia over the halfway line again. Four tackles gone though. Here is Gower. And Gower again looked to flick the ball inside, tried to go between two. Rahihi was there to close the gap with Kidwell. Last tackle here, Lockyer. Great kick, angled kick. Vinacolo's after this, he'll have to watch it and does. Great chase by Australia again. Led not, by Tony Carroll and Sean Berrigan. Not surprisingly, Eddie, Daniel Anderson is bringing off for Rahihi. He, just, he doesn't look fit. And he knows that uh, he was the culprit that went out of the line. Just lazy play, really. And it's good work from the coach, Anderson. Ruben Wicke. Heinmarsch gets to him. And 
Kidwell trying to skid his way inside and he does but uh, Sivanasiva took him low down last tackle here has to be a kick and it is from Luluai not a good one as soon as he kicked that he just dropped his head because Minicello picks it up on the fly Robbie Paul managed to do enough well then again they get 10 cheap meters and if you let them go oh that looked high you really would have felt that he would it was a bit of a swinging arm from Logan Swan Here's Willie Mason. That's three, gets They're up to the halfway line here. And they're over halfway with Fitzgibbon. Much more purpose in the running from the Australian forwards, and they need to be. Gower now. Showed it to Lockyer. Tried to get the ball away, bounced all over the shot. Play the, the first, first knock, knock on. on. Yeah. And he showed in the gap, and he just couldn't offload. Had a fine season there. Didn't touch the ball. New Zealand head and feet here. And Sonny Bill Williams yet again involved in it. He just grabbed the ball carrying arm. You're allowed to do that. If you don't touch the ball, then it's classified as a knock on. And Gower to, just getting back to Craig Gower. You know, Wayne Bennett has a lot of influence with selections, of course. But remember Brett Kimorley last year? He absolutely took Great Britain apart. I always feel that if Kimorley had not been playing in last last year's test series that Great Britain would have won and yet he can't find himself in the starting lineup neither on the bench well he's on his way to Cumbria to play in the uh, Anzac team against the Cumbrians in midweek is Brett Kimorley trying to give everybody a, a run in the squad if he can Wayne Bennett for what's to come in this Tri-Nations well the noise here from the New Zealand fans they're chanting Kiwis you'd think you're in Auckland oh and a fumble and another fumble and here comes Tonga for Australia, flicks the ball back on the inside, oh, New Zealand get it back. Here's Kidwell, but he thought he was going out over the whitewash. The Tonga flick the ball back in field, and what a gift that was for New Zealand. Wiki now for them. Well, fair play to the Kiwis, they're still adventurous, aren't they? Trying to keep this ball alive, scored three sensational tries in the first half. Bobby Paul from dummy half flicks the pass, Sonny Bill Williams. Tackle this time by Tonga and Craig Gower. Brent Webb waits at dummy half. Ball is played to him. Here is Kalis. Offloads again. Webb. Hindmarsh gets to him. Good tackle yet again by the second row, Nathan Hindmarsh. He gets through a heck of a lot of work, this fella. Oh, Ruben Wicky did brilliantly then. Went backwards, said the official. And here's Anderson. Vinnie Anderson, good quick end. Oh, Leslie Manicolo couldn't take the pass in. He just overran him. And he knows it. He knows he was in the wrong position. He says, sorry, mate, and he knows what golden opportunity that could have been. Just overstepped it. There's a slip back from Ruben Wiki. did go back. But you can see there that the big winger should have been at least two metres further back, and he knows it. He had to reach for it. They wouldn't have stopped him. There was no one at home. Come on, Jason, come on. Australia in possession with... Ruben Wicky manages to offload the ball despite really heavy traffic. Fitzgibbon now. Ian Millwood is on the sideline, still play, wet, Ian. Well, we can't uh, just reach Ian Millwood at the moment. With all this uh, rain, no wonder. Gower, the ball inside. This is Minicello standing in the tackle, trying to get the ball away, and does, but it goes forward. And so New Zealand have it back again. Well, there were hands all over the place, and one of them was Robbie Paul. I think we've blown the rain out of Ian's system. Ian, it's pretty damp down there still, yeah? Well, it's getting wetter and wetter, but, uh, you know, if you're a card player at the moment, you always like an ace up your sleeve here, and the ace for Australia is Craig Wynn, one of the most talented players in the NRL with speed and evasion. He's come on to replace Bidouris, who's created a lot of creativity around the rucks, and there's a great move by Wayne Bennett here now with it wet, and it's going to be really central around the rucks this game now. And also Timmins coming back on, who play with tremendous footwork. So at the moment, Australia looking very dominant, especially with Wing coming on. He creates that spark for him. Dancing little run though, and here come New Zealand with Wiki. He gets it away to Vanganar. Vanganar finds Francis Melly. Melly is a direct winger. He knows exactly where the trial end is. A little push, and New Zealand will accept the penalty. Goes to see a Frey Gower. Well, I'll be pumping this right into the corner. Half oh, back Gower. Came on for a second, went to the legs, and they've gone for a quick tap. 
and they found Brent Webb and it's opened up slightly for Webb closed by Lockyer but he offloads to Luluai Luluai then to Kalis and the big prop forward takes it forward bounces off two bounces off three Hindmarsh holds him down New Zealand are just eight meters away from the line this is David Kidwell underneath the sticks now the New Zealanders Robbie Paul went to go one way came this way back and up Rick Paul knocked forward play on six to go six to go surely will they need them Robbie Paul runs the ball out of play great build up from that fella Robbie Paul he threw as though he was going to the open side spun around as you can see went on the blind and it just didn't go right for him Willie Tonga was sucked in Luke Rooney he knew that if he couldn't get to that, he was in a lot of trouble. But great work from Willy Tonga. Yes, good defence. The referee had rules, six to go. The advantage, therefore, had gone. He's telling the New Zealanders that's why the Australians have the possession at the scrum. And here is the man that uh, Ian Millwood was just talking about, Craig Wing. Got he's got tremendous oh. play. Well, he's, if he says he hasn't heard the call, then... It's got to be a penalty. I call two, I call the tackle. It's got to give the penalty. You hear the official quite, no, quite clear. Sorry about I know it, it certainly lost him, and it did every right to Jason Kalis to, to question it, but the referee had already called, and you can see there that Craig Wing was going to definitely play the ball. That's the reason why Jason Kalis was penalised. Two balls on the pitch. And a bit of the stand as well, because when that ball hit the uh, just above the gantry here, a bit of plastic or something, it <laughs> fell to the ground as well. Mm, Webkey, it's risky business in this weather. But he's managed to get away with it, Webkey, because he flicked the pass away. And Sean Timmins was the first to dive on it. This is Willie Mason. Well, it's just sheer hard work. That's what's needed. And the composure when it comes to the kicking game. Just keep turning around the opposition. That's what they've got to do. The side that does that most. Riles just lost his footing. I'm just saying the side that does that most will come up winners. Penalty. Fiddling around at the play of the ball. Fred Webb. Two one again. Well, they're desperate to try and stop the momentum from the Australians, aren't they? Well, they're starting to miss a few tackles now, the Kiwis. In a big game, there's a fullback Brent Webb. Sadly, come up with uh, two vital errors. Here's Jason Riles again driving the ball in. This is dangerous now for New Zealand. Australia just ahead. Six points here would uh, maybe be a big turning point as Webkey gets it for Australia. Tries to bounce his way through a couple. Still going, Shane Webkey. Just held up short of the line. If there is a line there, it's nearly washed away by the rain. Wing the dummy half. Here comes Sean Timmins up the middle. Timmins. He was on an end of season break in Bali when the call came to join this kangaroo party. Wing to Gower, Gower then to Lockyer, Lockyer wide to Minicello, Minicello brilliant hands to Berrigan, Berrigan then to Lockyer, Lockyer then to Tonga, Billy Tonga, what a try, what a try from Australia. Fantastic handling skills in these dreadful conditions. And Willie Tonga with all the strength to hold off the would be challengers and just drop the ball over the line. Fantastic Australian play there. And maybe the turning point of this match. Unbelievable. The rain is pouring down, and you would think it was a sunny afternoon. Look at the precision passing there. Back on the inside. Oh, this is superb. Lock it again delayed the pass and the strength of this fella Willie Tonga great work wasn't it there from Berrigan and then once Lockyer got it look how he just sucked in David Kidwell the half break was there and the young center Willie Tonga has made a name for himself what a build up and what a try well we will see this fellow Willie Tonga in the Bulldogs hopefully in the World Club Challenge against Leeds start of next year meanwhile Lockyer here to try and add the extras which he does it's 20 points to 12 Australia here at Loftus Road and Dean Bell is that the killer blow for New Zealand
let's let's not give up on the Kiwis at the moment. I mean, they've shown a lot a lot of character already in this series to come back at the Aussies, but just looking at the way the, their body language is at the moment, the forwards are getting a little bit tired out there, and the Australians, composed as they are, controlling the game in that area. What would you be saying is the New Zealand captain out there tonight? Well, I think there's always going to be turnovers in conditions like this. It's where you turn the ball over that's important. And at the moment, the Kiwis are guilty of turning over in the wrong positions of the field. Well, they need to score next, New Zealand. They really have taken the game to Australia for 56 minutes. But the Aussies now have an eight-point lead. And the reason why they are in the lead, Eddie, is, is because it has taken something extra special on both the tries. The Lockyer try and, of course, the finish from Tonga. Oh, Gower has stepped through the challenges. He's got Willie Mason in support on his inside. Might not need him, but he knows that Luke Rooney is here and Rooney going for the line on his own. And New Zealand having to muscle up in defence. But a great break from the Australians. Two tackles remaining. It comes back to Lockyer. Lockyer then a bullet pass and it's stuck with Minicello. And Minicello takes the tackle. Kayla slow down and Anderson upstairs. Brilliant hands again from Lockyer, but great defence from the New Zealanders as Sean Timmins was looking for the try. Well, that's confidence from the Australians, but really, he should have offloaded Gower to the big fella. Willie Mason was there. I don't think that have stopped him. They got the cover defence where on the right-hand side when Luke Rooney got the football, but I think that could have wrapped it all up. I'm not so sure that Wayne Bennett will be too impressed. He'd be happy that Gower made the dummy and broke. But he really should have given it the big fella. Maybe the wrong option, Ian Milwood, taken by the Australians then. Yeah, but the on honour signs there straight away, Eddie's they're beating them around the rucks. And uh, they're, they're looking very confident there around the rucks. You've got to remind the Australians the way they've uh, come bounce back in the second half here. They've actually created some creativity, especially with the experienced people. And look, it's great to have class in any sport when you can back it up with some experience and guy, which is what has provided here. And they're key people, Lockyer and Gower. And we spoke about it before the game against the inexperience of the New Zealanders, especially Lulalai. This is where the game's been dominated now. And they're controlling the game very, very well. And they're stepping out of challenges, which is a little ominous as far as the New Zealanders are concerned. That was a great run there from Minicello. But did you see the take of the kick downfield by Luke Rooney just a couple of moments ago? The ball skidding off the turf, off the turf which is absolutely sodden wet. And yet Rooney held it like it was... Well, absolutely dry. Yeah, great hand skills. And I must say, the Kiwis now are beginning to just get a bit frustrated. They're going in a bit high. They're not going for the legs. Minicello to Lockyer. They need that composure. They've got to play as a unit in defence. This is the last one then for Australia, this set of six. And Sean Timmins waits. And he finds Craig Gower. And Gower will stab the ball in. It's a wonderful kick. It could be a try here for Berrigan. He was ready to chase it. And the referee will hand it on to the video ref. So the first job of the night for Ray Tennant. Tonight's video official who will have to decide whether Sean Berrigan has won the race here to a precision kick to in goal again. Beautiful way to kick there from the halfback Craig Gower. We're just going to check, see whether he's onside. Can't really see from that angle. Certainly comes from nowhere, doesn't he? Oh, they were caught napping. It deserved a try. No doubt about the pressure downwards, that's okay, that'll be T.O.I. Wonderful, wonderful play. Well, we've seen outstanding rugby league skill to put Lockyer in first. Here is confirmation. The try is given to Berrigan. And Berrigan maybe has buried the Kiwis. We often talk about applying the pressure and going for the sets of six one after the other and you only get it by doing this even if you hadn't come up with a ball you knew that had been back on the restart on the 20. so it's worth taking the risk you've got the lead and you just caught them napping great combination shallow in goal area zero doesn't matter when you kick like that superb stuff and here is Lockyer to add the extras which with that trusty left boot of his, he does, the Australian captain. It's a 14-point lead now, Australia 26, New Zealand 12. Sean Berrigan with a try. A former halfback who's made a successful switch to the centres this year. One of the best utility backs in the NRL under 
Wayne Bennett at Brisbane. And Berrigan with the try. And is that the try that breaks the Kiwis' hearts? They won't give it up, that's for sure, in the final quarter of the match. An hour gone. 14 points to the lead. Here is Webke. And as Webke drives it forward, Chris Warren has some injury news from the Aussie camp. Well, not good news, or I guess it could be good news, depending on how you look at it for Wayne Bennett. He's just lost Darren Lockyer. He's just gone up the tunnel right now. I'll find out the exact nature of the injury. It was in the event, the play just leading up to that try. And I guess Wayne Bennett and his coaching staff believe that the margin they've got right now is enough. So uh, why risk their champion duel? Lockyer off and on his way to the dressing rooms. The exact reason we'll do our best to find out for you as wing. One of the best interchange players in the business. And what's the decision going to be here from Russell Smith? A knock on against the Australians. They just need a little bit of luck down there, and he's certainly dropped it under no pressure. Trying to give the impression that Logan Swan was interfering, and he wasn't. Full house inside Loftus Road tonight watching this match. Just under 17,000. It's a great start to the tournament in this country and hopefully house full notices will be due at the city of Manchester Stadium next week and there's a knock on on the first tackle. A mistake by the New Zealanders in the shape of Francis Melly. Well, this is the scene, isn't it? Good work, though, by Willie Tonga. You notice how he just got the arm over the top of the ball carrying arm. Just pushed it down there. The Kiwis know they've got to try to force the area get the possession but that doesn't help the cause when you spill it in the first tackle this is Minicello for Australia ahead by 14 points Great Britain Australia next Saturday six o'clock Sky Sports one the city of Manchester Stadium looking forward to that I'm sure that the British players are looking forward to joining the party as well the Gillette Tri Nations up and running now Good hands again from Australia. Tony Carroll, though, the meat in the Kiwi sandwich there. I made the point, Teddy, in the first half that Kiwis were having to do so much defending for long periods of time. You just had to wonder whether they'd start to run out of gas. And you just get the feeling that the New Zealand is just a little bit slow now. Wing to Gower, and there's the kick. And Leslie Vinacolo's underneath this. Got a two green and gold jerseys after it. Oh, he's got so close. So close for Matt Singh. So close. Well, he got the height, didn't he? He was nowhere near him when he got... Uh... Well, as the ball came down and it reached Vinicolo, the Australians were on him. Oh. They could have been a great take. Vinicolo just went a little bit early. He was on the downward. On a dry night, that might well have been another try. Vanganai on the inside finds Sonny Bill, who was looking to offload again as he took the tackle from Timmins. Anderson, Wiki, needs something special from the skipper now. Boy, wouldn't I love to see one of our clubs over here, Eddie, and just break the bank to, to purchase this guy. He's impressed me, Sonny Bill Williams. He's outstanding. I don't think you will be able to prize him away somehow from the Canterbury Bulldogs, Steve-O. Of course, we will have the pleasure of... Uh, yes, the World Club. World Club next year. And uh, Leeds Rhinos will be carrying the flag for Great Britain. The Canterbury Bulldogs carrying the flag for the Aussies. Two new teams in that competition. And it's at Ellen Road on February the 4th, by the way, that. And a little note for your new diary in 2005. Daniel Anderson, the New Zealand coach, he departed the Warriors of New Zealand in June, replaced by Tony Kemp. And uh, Anderson guided them to playoffs in 2001, and the Premiership in 2002, and the Grand Final. They were 80 minutes away from the second Grand Final last year. But it all unraveled for him, I'm afraid, in 2004. And this match here is just starting to unravel a little bit for the Kiwis now. Poor old Dean Bell has gone a little bit quiet up here on the gantry alongside us. Yes, yeah, a bit like the players out there, just say told you before the body language and one once we had a break there a couple of minutes ago it took about three tackles for the players to get back so and when the high kick went up there by uh, Gower all the players they knew there was a 20 meter tap coming up but all the players had their hands on their knees so they're running out of gas at the moment 15 minutes of the match remaining as Mason plays the ball it's Gower again there's the little angled kick oh and it skips almost dangerously past 
Leslie Vinacola will try and build the attack from deep. Let's go back to uh, Chris Warren on the side. Chris, some more news of Darren Lockyer, maybe. Yes, Eddie, uh, worst fears confirmed for the Australians, and it could put a serious damaging blow to their Tri-Nations campaign. The severity of the injury not yet confirmed, but it is a recurrence of the rib injury, uh, which forced him out for so many weeks this year in the NRL. Well, it would be a, a tragedy for Australia if Darren Lockyer cannot shape up against Great Britain next week, but um, he is uh, the best in the world. We've already dubbed him so tonight, and why not? And uh, I wouldn't say it would be great news for Great Britain, but it would not be unwelcome news for the British camp. Oh, great run, lovely spin there by Asatazi. He has support either side of him. Asatazi taking on Minicello. Couldn't get the ball away from the last tackle. Great work from Matt Singh there, the winger. Made sure he moved from a nuisance. Oh, Sonny Bill Williams put the pass down. Well, we put the mocker on him. Got a great night. It's been a long time since New Zealand have been in this position. Just took his eye off the ball in the very last minute. But Asatosi, what a great break. But look how Wing just put himself in between. Oh, that's, that's play on. The Kiwis have got an opportunity. They have with Vinnie Anderson. Anderson tries to get away from Tony Carroll. Tackle not completed. Now it will be. And here they come again in the shape of Fatuira. Fatuira will play the ball to the other Anderson. That's Louis. He finds Luluai. And here now is Kalis. It's Nathan Kalis. Well, a try now for New Zealand would be like manna from heaven. And here is Brent Webb. By Sonny Bill. The pass is poor. Nothing's going out for the youngster now. A little bit of encouragement there. It's a good tackle though. Long low. And two golden opportunities virtually squandered. Oh, that's great defense. He's worked hard in that department. Craig Gower. Kicking game, especially midway through the first half, was uh, excellent. So head and feet of the scrum to Australia. They've kept calm, though, of Australia. They do deserve to have that lead. They roll the sleeves up in the forwards, especially this fellow. Leads by example, Shane Webke. Yes, just, he does. 24th the cap is winning tonight, Shane Webke. They settled it down. They didn't panic. They knew they'd just grind their way into a good position. And I must say that Dan and Locke has really been the architect for Australians to be in the lead. That is going to be a bitter blow if he can't make it. Oh, Gower's going to the move. Knock on, it's going to be head and feet to the New Zealanders. Ian Millwood, that uh, news about Darren Lockyer could overshadow this entire game, couldn't it? Ian Millwood is floating somewhere over on the far side. Water, we think, in the works. Not Ian Millwood's works, but in the works of our microphones. We'll try and dry things out and get back to him in a minute. This is Brent Webb. Now it's Logan Swan again for New Zealand. The Aussies, of course, they were here just a year ago. They won that Ashes series 3-0. They were here in 2001. They won 2-1. They also won the 95 and 2000 World Cups in this country. They know what it means to win in the UK. Sonny Bill Williams takes a real hit there on the top of his noggin from Petro Sivanasiva. Well, it was a high shot, wasn't it, from Sivanasiva? Should have been penalised for it, too. Little wide to Webb. Webb then back on the inside to Logan Swan. Hindmarsh gets to Logan Swan. Sivanasiva working hard again. He still manages to offload, though. Luluai. Luluai attacking the line. And that's Vanganar. He can't get underneath the three challengers. It's the last tackle here for the Kiwis. Luluai waits. Finds Brent Webb. Webb will dab the kick in. Knocks it forward. Play on. It wasn't played on at any way. And Hindmarsh has it back for Australia. Ian Milwood, the water's out of the works and you're back with us. I was just asking you about the Darren Lockyer injury. What a blow that would be to them. Well, I think everyone's got their hearts in now for the Australian. If you're an England player in Spain, you're thinking, well, hey, listen, this is one of the best players in the world and uh, gives us a great opportunity. For New Zealand, it's too late now because he's caused all the damage here tonight. And I think he's probably very close to man of the match. I've got to endorse what uh, Steve-O said there earlier. Shane Webke and Jason Riles have really upped the ante here in the second half here. 
I've got to take the hat off to Jason Riles. The way he's, the minutes he's played here today, he's been quite outstanding. This has been a very, very professional performance by the Australians here in the back end. And I know the Haas will take a lot of credit, but those two front rowers have laid the foundation. Well, what a take on the deck, and they keep the ball moving. This is Luke Rooney. Luke Rooney stabs the ball in, and what a take then by Lulawai. Well, we did have a bit of a nutcase on the field, as you probably saw there, and he was being taken away by the stewards. Wait, wait, wait. And uh, he has seen the last of this match, I think, and uh, I don't think we've seen the last of him at the minute. But anyway, he's gone. Two, Thankfully, put him on a train to Brighton. <laughs> As Nathan Kalis comes forward again for the New Zealanders. And here's Francis Melly. A little distraction for the crowd. And he was involved in the play there as the ball went up in the air as well. The, the stewards and the, the man himself. The thing is, Eddie, it's dangerous, you know I mean? Someone could come up with an injury, and that's a mistake that they well, didn't want. Well, absolutely, he was—he was a. He, we don't encourage it, of course, but I bet you something, Steve. That will be on Soccer AM next week on Sky Sports. That won't be. It's been a case of if in the second half from the Kiwis, far too many errors and far too many mistakes early in the tackle count. Hey, Tony Carroll. Taking a knock, he's worked hard. They've had to, both sides. He uh, doesn't look too crash hot, does he? No, he doesn't. This has been a, a rough and tough match. Lockyer has left the field. We don't know the exact extent of his injury, but it's a worry for the Australians ahead of next week against Great Britain. This could be a worry for them as well, Tony Carroll. Willie yeah. Mason is prowling the side, waiting to return. Well, the 26-12, you don't take the risk. Just let him just settle down slightly and then take him to the sidelines. You see he just got his head in the wrong position. Caught the hip. It's all right if you're going forward. Well, Lockyer sitting on the side. He, uh, he knows the job is done, perhaps, here. And Tony Carroll is back, packing down in the scrum. He's been out, outstanding. Well, that surprises me. Get in. 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 Here's Baderas for Australia, meanwhile. Three. And Australia now have used all 12 interchanges that they are allowed, so they go with what's left. Craig Gower gets the ball away to wing and oh, just hauled down. Baderas again trying to get the ball to, Gower, to uh, Minicello, which he does. Last one here for Australia, so close to the Kiwis line. There's Gower, there's the kick, bounces horribly and is picked up. Siva, and that could be a try for Siva. It would be his first try in the green and gold of Australia if it is given. Well, there's a little bit of pushing and argy bargy went on there. He's, he checking, he's checking the onside, he's also checking the grounding. Nothing wrong with the onside, there's Siva and Siva behind the play. Yeah, it was so low, but it was a bad ricochet for Webb, the full-back. But on the left-hand side, Anthony Minicello and... Uh, Couple of the Kiwis. I think he's onside. A bit TRY. Did everything right. Rolled over. That'll be a try then. Super Deceiver. Enjoy that one. It's his third visit to the UK. Petro Sivan Deceiver. Tours of 2001 2003. Sub in all six of the Ashes games against Great Britain on those last two tours. This could be his first try in international football. And he will be. And the try is given. <laughs> Petro Sivanesiba adds his name to the list of try scorers. Again, the tactics absolutely spot on. Wet conditions. We saw the kick from Gower, which gave Berrigan the try. And another kick has produced it yet again. Okay. Got the
a ricochet. You can see the fullback Red Webb in no man's land. And uh, the kicker, Sean Berrigan. Change of kicker for Australia. Lockyer off, of course. It's given not out there on the field. But the uh, scoreline now 32 points to 12, and that's four tries without reply from Australia in the second half. And looking at the overall context of this tournament, Steve Great Britain have been able to match them in the past. We nearly matched them last year in three tests, only until the last five minutes. But the second half performance here for Australia is just a little ominous. Well, it certainly is, mainly due to the fact that uh, they've upped the tempo in the second half, but they have now played over the last fortnight two very, very hard games. Great Britain have to go in cold. It won't be easy. Cold but, but fresh, Steve-O. Well, they can do it. Don't worry about that. And the uh, City of Manchester Stadium is a lot, lot bigger and a lot, lot wider than this, by the way. So I don't think the match will be played necessarily up the middle next Saturday. Well, I'm sure Brian Noble Where have we got the wingers, we'll Steve? Well, Where are our problem. wingers? Where are Great Britain's wingers? We don't have the speed out wide like the Australians. That you have to agree with. Luke Rooney, Matt Singh. Kick from Badiris downfield. Attention now will switch, of course very much so to the city of Manchester Stadium we have six minutes here Australia have won this match so they will have three points in the try nations and Melly he broke the tackle and he's able to continue on great work from the winger there they fully deserve uh, not to have a scoreline like this it's been a great brave effort by the Kiwis but you often look at any sport Eddie you have the linchpins, you know, the centre-half in soccer. You're also looking in rugby league, the two half-backs. And you can't get better than the performance from Darren Lockyer and Craig Gower. They have been the architects, and they have ripped New Zealand apart in the second half. Robbie Paul, Australia, having to defend here. New Zealand still looking for the tries. And they've got the re start from underneath the post they're going to get another set of six Daniel Anderson knows that come the final shake-up points difference could be important in this yeah. Tri-Nations the top two in the league table will go on to the final of Ellen Road and if it comes to Neville Pegging but it will come down to points difference well he won't give in that's for sure New Zealand never do that they're trying their best, but Daniel Anderson will be ruining the fact this is their first dropout in the second half, and it just shows you that that means that their kicking game has not been good and their handling has, even been, has even been worse. Roy Asatazi on the very first tackle. And that's a third occasion, Eddie, in this second stanza that the Kiwis have given up the ball. Well, the Australians are enjoying themselves now. Well, they call them fanatics. They certainly are. If they were, if they're dressing up like that. Well, the uh, the New Zealanders will have next week off, of course, and then they will play Great Britain a fortnight's time tonight. And I think they will be uh, happy to regroup after this. But they do have the point from the 16-all draw in Auckland last Saturday. And here is Berrigan again for Australia. Two. Daniel Anderson, of course, he'll be happy with the first half display. It was, it was exciting, it was wonderful. By the way, Daniel Anderson will be our guest at the City of Manchester Stadium next Saturday night. The New Zealand coach will join us in the studio to run the rule over Great Britain and Australia. Ian Millwood will be there as well. I suppose we can't keep you away, Steve-O. I'll try my best to be there, and it's, uh, I wouldn't miss this tournament, that's for sure. And talking of missing... It's a shame for Daniel Anderson that he will not have Leslie Vinacolo in a fortnight's time. High kick again, and Chester for Vinacolo once more. Took it well, diffused the ball, and he wants to get going. Well, they want to get it going quickly. Now they can. New Zealand all on side. And here goes Leslie Vinacolo again. Three minutes to go, and I think I've just heard on the Tamoy that uh, Darren Lockyer, the injured Australian skipper, has been announced as the man of the match. It's no surprise, Eddie. Well, he did enough in the time he was on the field to catch everyone's eye. Here's Sonny Boy William, uh, Sonny Bill Williams, I've called him Sonny Boy, I've called him Sonny Bill. I think I'll just call him Sonny from now on. Williams would be nice as well. Here is Vinacolo, but it's forward. forward. 
again Leslie just caught out being a little bit up front you can see he was standing in front before the centre could offload a couple of occasions where he's had the opportunity but just a little bit too eager Logan Swan has worked hard he has and from the base of the scrum it's Gower who finds Berrigan and Kiwi's having to muscle up in defence Leslie Vinacolo was there he is Mason again I think when you sort of look at the wash up of this game Eddie Daniel Anderson the Kiwi coach will probably think to himself you know it could have been a different ball game if they had kicked all those three conversions Absolutely. in the first half but it, but it just left Australia Timmy with a, a little bit of light there as soon as Lockyer scored early in the second half you just got a feeling that the green and goals were going to run a bit right and this is Riles what you're saying is when you play Australia you have to take your chances you've got to you're going to make the points get, up, get that scoreboard ticking that's knocked out that should have been a, a scrum and he's got it the referee got a call from the touch judge this near side I think yep and that's great to see Dean Bell I think 32-12 uh, it's no disgrace for the Kiwis it could have been a different story couldn't it no I think it's an accurate reflection of the uh, of the match really uh, Australia come out in the second half determined I mean you gotta look at their defense give some credit to their defense yes the New Zealanders have got tired but the defensive display by Australia has been absolutely awesome they've been in the faces of the New Zealanders all game New Zealand guilty, they can't build pressure. Every time they get the ball, they're either turn the ball over in the first tackle or the second or third, and do that against Australia, they'll make you pay. They will be happy, I think, for the week off next week, and they'll let Australia and Great Britain knock each other to pieces. Well, that's right. I think this series is going to be the survival of the fittest, really. I think the physios are going to be the most worked people in, in the game, and, and I think, really, losing players like Lockyer would be a huge blow to uh, Australia's chances. Yes, there will be a lot of furrowed brows in the Australian camp if uh, Darren Lockyer is out of the next match and maybe the one after that Great Britain will come back from their warm weather camp in Spain we hope all fit and raring to go the likes of Sean Long Paul Sculthorpe Martin Gleeson of course Andrew Farrell all the rest here goes Wagner the Kiwis can they just have the last word here oh Wagner loses it well as Dean Bell has mentioned that has been their big problem and it was so, so close to the, the final word, because that is the final side. Just lost comp. It's all a bit completely. Is that a big game, though? Both can attack and defence. Full time in London and the Australian Kangaroos have taken the first full competition points in this year's Tri-Series tournament.